Okay, so I am starting with um, chapter number 13 today, which sort of gives you uh, an introduction to this subsection on industrial organization and it introduces you to some concepts of cost. The chapter is titled Cost of Production. Before we understand how do markets operate, how does a perfectly competitive market operate, how does a monopolist operate, it is first important to understand some concepts that you will be requiring to uh, understand these market forms properly. And cost is obviously one of the major parts of this section on industrial organization. What exactly is cost and how do we understand cost in economics. Why are we interested in cost is because ultimately we know that whenever any firm operates, the intention of operation is always profit. The firms are always thinking about profit, whether you talk about a perfectly competitive firm or you talk about a monopolist or you talk about any other market form like an oligopoly, etc. So you talk about any of these market forms, the ultimate goal is to maximize the profit, right? And we should know that profits are nothing but a difference of revenue and cost. When you subtract the total cost from the total revenue that a firm is earning, you get the profits of the uh, firm. Now, uh, to understand profits, it's important to first look at what exactly are costs. And in economics, we treat costs slightly differently. And that sets the difference between accounting cost and economic cost. In accounts specifically, you would consider costs as anything that requires an outlay of money. So anything that you need to pay for, uh, there is a physical exchange of money involved, there is some expenditure that you are making would be counted as cost from the perspective of an accountant. And even from the perspective of a general layman person, you ask this question to anybody, what is the cost that you incurred? They will primarily list down the services or the goods that they had paid some money on. But in economics, we deal with this concept slightly differently. So I uh, gave an example of uh, an individual named Caroline who is starting up with her business. So she has set up a cookie business where she's producing cookies and she's selling them. Now, if we try to think of the possible cost that she might have incurred, it will include some costs on raw materials like she might have spent some money on flour, sugar, preservatives, etc. She might have required uh, to spend on uh, some services like she might have taken some help from maybe some chefs, some assistants. Uh, some packaging people so she might have recruited some people to help her in this operation and that will comprise under labor so she will require to spend some money uh, on these services then she might require some machines like she might require oven or like similar machines blending etc etc there could be different kinds of machines that she's using to produce cookies so any expenditure that she's making on purchasing these commodities these capital goods will be included in the cost, then she might be spending on some fixed um, cost, like she might be renting a place or obviously wherever she is setting up this business, she might be renting a shop or a place of operation. So the rent she is paying will be included in the cost. Then she might be using electricity to run her operations and that will also be a cost. Uh, these are some broad kinds of costs that she will have to incur uh, in this operation and all of these you will notice that would require some amount of exchange of money these are called as accounting costs or explicit cost but economics may when we talk about cost we include another kind of cost which is called as an implicit cost and that forms the definition of cost or specifically economic cost and this is very very important to understand the further concepts that you will be reading in this uh, set of chapters a lot of people get confused with this concept of cost because to a layman cost is always these kinds of costs that we have listed down in the category of accounting cost but as economists as students of economics it's important to understand how how economists understand cost. Now, implicit costs are costs which do not require an outlay of money. You do not really have to spend anything uh, for these costs. What are implicit costs? This is something that you have already studied. Implicit costs are nothing but the opportunity costs of the operation. 
of whatever task you are running. So for example, if we talk about uh, the Caroline uh, example where she's producing cookies, she will spend her money on all of these uh, raw material services, etc. But she is also incurring an implicit cost by losing what she could have done in place of producing cookies, which is called as the opportunity cost. So in economics, we treat opportunity cost as the next best alternative. And the monetary value of this next best alternative is nothing but the opportunity cost of producing cookies. So the monetary value of the next best alternative will be the implicit cost. So let's take an example. Let's say that instead of producing cookies, she could have worked in another company, another company where she could be recruited as a head chef and she is producing cookies for them. She doesn't have her own company, but she's producing cookies for some other company. And that company would have given her, let's say, uh, some money, some X money per day. Now, this is the money that she could have earned if she wasn't producing cookies for her own firm, for her own company, right? If she wasn't running her own business, then she, this is the money that she could have got. Now, this is obviously not a direct cost, not an explicit cost, but an implicit cost. Again, it, this these kinds of costs do not require any exchange of money. She's not getting this money from the other company. She's just hypothetically considering this as a cost because this is an implicit cost. This is not really a direct cost, but you are sort of uh, losing this because you are running your own business. So implicit cost or the opportunity cost is always included in the definition of economic cost. Economic cost is an addition of the accounting cost and the implicit cost. For example, you talk about this definition of profit where we say profit is equal to revenue minus cost. This cost includes economic cost. The cost that we are referring to is the economic cost. To the related concept of profit, we will also have to modify our understanding of profit as an accountant versus as an economist. So the difference between the economic profit and accounting profit. Now, I've already stated the fact that profit is nothing but revenue minus cost. But now, because we understand the meaning of economic cost, we will also have to understand the meaning of economic profit. Now, what is economic profit? Economic profit is the difference between revenue minus economic cost. Whereas accounting profit will be difference between revenue minus cost. So if I take some numbers hypothetically, let's say uh, the accounting cost incurred is equal to uh, 10,000 rupees. So on the entire production of cookies, maybe she's producing say 100 cookies or whatever set of cookies she's producing, she's incurring 10,000 rupees uh, as accounting cost. Implicit cost or uh, opportunity cost, let's say, is 1500 because that is the amount that she's losing by running her own business. So let's say 1500 is that money. So economic cost will basically be 1500 which is the implicit cost, plus the accounting cost. So it will be 11500 so If she sells the entire set of cookies that she's producing in a specific day, let's say the revenue is 20000 Okay, this is the money that she is getting by selling these cookies. Now, how would you treat economic profit versus accounting profit? Accounting profit will be directly 20,000 minus 10,000 because this makes sense to an accountant. Accountant would consider opportunity cost as an abstract cost. It is a hypothetical cost. You are not spending any money on it. Neither are you getting any money. Yeah, so you are not, there is no exchange of money. There is no plus and minus of money happening. The accountant would not include any of the opportunity cost. Directly, the profit will be equal to 10,000. Whereas if you talk about an economic profit, profit from the perspective of an economist, he or she will definitely consider the opportunity cost as well. And in this case, you will notice that the economic profit will be lesser. You notice that think of it in terms of the money that you are earning. It is 10,000. But if you think of it in terms of economics, then your profit is 8,500. So because if I can put it down in uh, 
a form of a graph or or a chart if say this is your total revenue yeah, out of this revenue this much are your um, explicit cost or what you call as the accounting cost for an accountant if this is the total revenue and this is your explicit cost then this entire area will be your profit which is 10000 but if you talk about an economist then the economist will also add another layer of cost which is the implicit cost and that will reduce the area of profit for an economist so the perspective of an economist of profits is this that he or she will consider the profits to be smaller than the accounting profits so one result that you can definitely establish is that economic profits are always less than the accounting profits ek economist kisi bhi profit ko kaise consider kar raha hai the net profit that the economist will consider from the 10000 is actually 8500 Although in terms of money you are going to receive ten thousand rupees, but an economist will perceive it as eight thousand five hundred because the economist would also want to cover the opportunity cost. The economist would also consider that one thousand five hundred rupee that Caroline is losing when she is running her own business. So the effective profit to an economist will in fact be eight thousand five hundred rather than ten thousand.